Holy greetings to you, brothers and sisters, and God bless you. This is Scott Bradley coming to you this day, a day that the Lord hath made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. Thank God for another Thursday that he's given us to come and to share with you the goodness of the Lord and to inspire and to encourage you to walk with Jesus. Listen, do this for me right away. Those of you that are viewing us and those of you that will be viewing us, we're going back and forth. Please hit the share button. Please hit the share button to let people know that we are on. And let us know where you are viewing from. That's what I'd like to know. Uh, last week, we got many uh, uh, people that chimed in from various portions of the country, and someone even chimed in from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, so uh, that really encouraged me to know that we are traveling all over the world. This, this image, this sound is being uh, presented all over the world. I want you to do that for us. I want you to let us know where you're uh, viewing us from. And uh, I believe that the Lord is going to encourage and inspire our hearts and bless us in what we're endeavoring to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. All right. Now, we are continuing our series. We continue our series on uh, teachings. Uh, excuse me here. I've got to get my cat out the way. He wants to join in here. Uh, we are doing our revelation, still teaching our revelation uh, on, on false teachings of false prophets, uh, some of the cults. Today, we're going to deal on the subject of Islam. We're going to deal on the subject of Islam. Now, let me start out by saying that Islam is not a cult. Uh, it is a religion. In fact, it is one of the five major religions in the world today, uh, those being Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, and uh, I think that's all five. Yeah, Christianity, Hinduism, Islam, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, five five major religions in the world today. So it is a major religion. But let me start this out by destroying a myth. Uh, the problem with many religions today is that they teach uh, that we are heaven is gained by being good, by good works. Even sometime in our Christianity, we make the mistake of thinking that heaven is gained uh, by being good. Uh, people will say, you know, that you know, if you're good, outweighs your bad. Well, that's a myth. That's the attempt of religion. That's the attempt of all religions to, to teach one to be good, and the good outweighs the bad. And therefore, they go to paradise or, or wherever in their mind the hereafter is. The reality never good enough. It is only through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way, and we must come by Him. Because he is the only one, if we want to use that concept, that's good enough. He's the only perfect man. He's the only one that lived 33 years sinless, died as an innocent man, and died for all of us that are guilty. Praise the Lord. So that's a myth that we destroy. That's a myth that we have to get rid of. Uh, now, again, going back to our teaching, the, the, the theme scripture, I want to read this morning. I'm going to do my best to try to get this in today in our half hour period. Uh, I don't want to extend this next week, but if necessary, we will if we cannot get everything in because there's a whole lot that I have to cover in this, this session. Uh, I've got so many other things backed up that I want to get to, start teaching, and the Lord's been giving me things. I've been writing things down, keeping mental notes, uh, and I want to get to that. But I want to finish this series first. So I'm going to do my best to try to finish and deal with Islam today. Uh, if I can, I will have to take it into next week. And again, I don't know for sure if we're going to be able to do that or not. Uh, but I want to go to our theme scripture. Uh, this is Galatians, the first chapter. And starting in verse 6, Apostle Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you under the grace of Christ to, unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, these are words of Apostle Paul. He calls other gospels, other reforms, other ideas perverted. This is what he says. But though we or an angel from heaven, and this is significant because we talked about last week, we talked about Joseph Smith. He's supposed to receive these, these visitations from angels and whatnot. Paul says, though we or an angel from heaven, and we're going to find this in, in Islam, preach any other gospel unto you, then that that we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now, again, there are two key words here, perverted and cursed. This is what Apostle Paul says in, for another gospel. As we said before, verse 9, so said, so, pardon me, so said now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than what ye have heard and received, let him be accursed. 
Now, again, Apostle Paul is dealing with the infiltration of false doctrine that has come into the church. Uh, as I stated from the onset, religion, there's a difference between religion and knowing Jesus. And, and, and sometimes there are myths in religion. Sometimes there's, there's false ideas in religion. Again, the main focus of religion is trying to make yourself good, being a good Christian, being a good Muslim, being a good Jew, uh, whatever. And that's what gets you to heaven. That is not true. We're not saved by our goodness. The Bible says all of our righteousness is filthy rags in the sight of God. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If all of us have sinned, that means that we are disqualified from the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is the work of God. Jesus is God incarnated because of the love of God. Loving uh, love a man, loving him so much until he becomes a man, lives holy, fulfills the law. This is why Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, I came to fulfill it. Fulfills the law uh, and then dies as an innocent man. So we can only come through him. That being said, we want to deal with Islam because Islam is another religion. And in fact, Islam states, and, and it's probably true to some effect, that it is the fastest growing religion in the world. Uh, that probably is true. But understand, it's not necessarily by conversion as much as, as it is by birth rate in Muslim countries. Uh, so, you know, when, when, when in Muslim countries, of course, in a family with mother and father Muslim, uh, the child is raised Muslim. Uh, if, in fact, one of the, if the husband is Muslim and the wife is Christian, according to Islamic law, the child must be raised Muslim. Uh, and this is why in many cases, when you find that Muslims convert and give their lives to Jesus, they, they don't want to tell people because they're afraid of repercussions, even from their own families. Uh, let's start out with Mohammed and who was Mohammed. First of all, Mohammed was not born until 570 AD, uh, 470 AD, I'm sorry, uh, 470 AD, Alam Damo, which is Latin for year of our Lord. Uh, so he would have come much later than uh, the, the birth of the church. Uh, the ministry of Jesus, uh, almost 500 years later. Uh, you know, and by the time of his birth, there was already uh, Christianity that spread throughout the then known world. Uh, the idea that, you know, uh, this, uh, this the, 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 that Islam is the religion of the black man as the nation of Islam will teach is, is false because the gospel actually went down into Africa. Uh, the oldest church is the Coptic church, which is in Ethiopia, started in Alexandria, Egypt, uh, by John Mark, the writer of the book of Mark in the Gospels. Uh, so the gospel is already in Africa, uh, and it spread throughout the then known world. Uh, Mohammed was raised on what was referred to as Nestorianism. Uh, Nestorian Christianity uh, was, was considered a heretic by the Ephesus Council in 431 AD, meaning that it was not the true presentation of the gospel. I'm going to give you a definition of it in a second here. Uh, when we're talking about Nestorius, Nestorius emphasized the disunion of the divine and human natures of Christ, meaning, whereas in Christianity, Christian theology believes that Christ was all man and all God at the same time, Nestorians believed Jesus Christ was not identical with the Son, but personally united with the Son, who lives in him is one, meaning he tried to separate the divinity from the humanity. Now, again, this is a contradiction to who Jesus was. He was all man and all God. Now, the reason why I say this is because this would have an influence in the concept of how Muhammad viewed Jesus. Uh, and I have here a study guide out because this is what I'm going to be teaching from here today. Uh, this is a study guide I did a number of years ago called Christianity versus Islam, and it's available, make it available to you where you can get it along with the CD tape. Uh, Mohammed, uh, as, as, a, as a young man, uh, was, was widowed early. Uh, or I say widowed, uh, uh, an orphan early, orphaned early because uh, his parents had died. Uh, he began to follow a group called the Hanafas, H-A-N-N-I-F-A-S, the Hanafas, seekers of truth. Uh, these uh, deep meditation, prayer, and fasting. Somebody said, well, that's a good thing. Well, it depends on who you are seeking. Uh, most indications are that they did not seek any particular God. They just sought truth. Uh, and how it manifested itself, that's what they were going to go after. 
uh, what you have to understand, uh, brothers and sisters, is that sometimes if you're uh, praying and fasting to the wrong God or the wrong deity, uh, you can be ministered to by something else, uh, which the purpose is deception. And you oftentimes heard me even say this, even to the, to the church, to Christians, you know, if we fast wrong, we can pick up another spirit. There's, fasting can be dangerous if not done properly. Uh, again, time won't be to go into that, but, but I'm saying that to say this, that uh, it was in the cave of Hira, I believe it was, uh, that he encountered the angel Gabriel, according to what Muhammad said. Uh, now, remember what Paul said, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you other than what we preach, let him be accursed. Uh, I want to read something here. This is getting out of my study guide. In each 40, Muhammad claimed to have had an experience that would have changed the life and hence all of history. In a mountain cave, he had an apparition with the angel Gabriel, Gabriel and appeared to him and said, you are a messenger of God, recite. What shall I recite? Uh, according to the history, the angel began to choke him. Recite, he ordered Muhammad, uh, and he began to recite what would become uh, the surah, which was a chapter in the Quran. But here's an interesting thing. Muhammad could neither read nor write. Um, all accounts of other Muhammad was uh, predominantly illiterate. Uh, he could neither read nor write. Uh, the account of the angel choking him can also be interpreted another way. Some scholars believe that Muhammad suffered with what we now refer to as epileptic seizures. Some scholars have said that. Uh, and, and it's possible that this, this choking sensation uh, could have been brought on by a seizure. Now, in those days, people interpreted seizures one of two ways. They interpreted it as either the devil possesses you or that God has given you divine revelation. The Lord is dealing with you. Uh, and if, in fact, there were, and I'm not saying it was or wasn't, I'm not saying he suffered this, not, I'm just simply giving you that some scholars believe this. If, in fact, uh, he was suffering a seizure, it could very easily have been interpreted as an encounter with God if not the devil. Uh, and there's a statement he made by uh, uh, um, Moshe, uh, who's a scholar uh, uh, on page 157. He says this, is this type of meditation, I remember when he was praying and fasting, is this type of meditation a person is involved in that will determine who can speak to him and which being may come into he may come into contact with? Meditation based on false ideology brings people into contact with false spirits and false gods. Now, again, he, his group, the Hanifa, spent time praying, fasting, and spending time in the, in the mountains meditating. Uh, and he opened himself up to a, another type of spirit. The Bible said to us, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. For well, there are many spirits going out, spirits of antichrist, uh, spirits of religion. You know, you have religious spirits, you have religious demons. Uh, the purpose of them is to deceive. You know, there's something about the nature of man. He is aware of God. He is aware of God. Uh, if the devil, and I say the devil, the spirit, demonic, demon, devil, and his kingdom, if the devil and demonic forces allow man to seek God unimpeded, his fear is he may find God. And so he'll create false gods, false illusions, false apparitions, all of these things we have to be aware of. Apostle Paul warned us, believe not every spirit. Apostle Paul, or I'm sorry, John warned us, it was St. John who said, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they be of God. Apostle Paul said, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you other than what we have preached, let him be accursed. So this is what we're dealing with. Uh, Muhammad became very disturbed by this, uh, you know, the, these, these apparitions. And uh, eventually, I believe it was his uncle and, and one of the uh, others there that began to tell him that he was a prophet. Now, what's interesting about this, and, and I want to move on, because when Muhammad first began to preach his revelations in Western Arabia, he was exiled. He was driven out of Mecca to a place called Medina. Uh, Medina... Uh, they believed in a number of, of deities. Now, I don't want to skip ahead because, because in root there, uh, he actually, being feeling he was a prophet, allied himself with the Arab Jews there. Uh, but they rejected him for a number of reasons. Number one, because he couldn't read. Number two, because he could not properly interpret the Torah. Uh, so they rejected him. He later became an enemy of the Jews. His Christian influence, 
as I said before, not only did it, was it with the uh, historians, but also with the Catholics. Uh, a lot of the things in Catholicism that are taught, such as uh, God having a mother, Mary the mother of God, uh, praying to the saints, uh, all these other things, uh, are not in, in, in mainstream Christian theology. And again, I don't mean to attack the Catholics, and again, maybe I do. Uh, but a lot of the influence that he had, even today, I've noticed today when the Pope is dealing with the, the Hanafas of, uh, of Islam and the Imams of Islam, uh, they're always in fellowship. And, and, and in many cases, uh, the, the uh, Imams of, Is, of Islam uh, think that it's the Catholic Church that has the real theology of Christianity. Uh, and in many cases, they don't. In much cases, a lot of the uh, uh, ancient paganism has been incorporated into the Catholic Church. Now, again, I'm not going to go into that now. Uh, I know that I've got Catholic people listening, and I don't mean to offend you or anything like that. Then again, maybe I do because I'm trying to show you that Jesus and Jesus alone is the only way. There is no salvation in Mary. There's no salvation in saints. There's no salvation in, in, in angels. Jesus Christ is the only way. Uh, that being said, getting back to my original point, uh, when Muhammad saw that he could not uh, uh, unify the uh, Arab Muslims, uh, I'm sorry, Arab Jews, he later uh, hooked in with a group called the Sebians. The Sebians believed in a number of deities, which is where we're going to come to who Allah was. Sebians believed in a number of deities. They believed in the deity of the sun, the moon, and the offspring. Uh, you probably heard this in, in other teachings. Uh, the ancient Egyptians, of course, believed in the sun. Uh, Horus, the moon, Isis, and the offspring Horus. That's in uh, Egyptian mythology. Uh, another name for, for Horus was Ra, uh, the sun Ra. Uh, and so you have these uh, uh, intercrossings or, or, or as it were, uh, inter uh, exchange of, of, of uh, uh, ideas of, of deity and, and, and God, as it were, small God, G-O-D-S. Uh, and it was influenced in the Sebians. They believed in a number of deities. They believed in a, in a deity of the sun, a deity of the moon, and the offspring. There were three daughters of the moon, Alet, Aluza, and Manet. These were known as the daughters of Allah. Allah was a moon deity of the Sebian tribe. Now, in order, historically, it's always been a fact, in order for... Uh, prophets to rise, they have to convince the people that they are the mouthpiece of God. Uh, or the people have to be convinced, the people have to believe that they're the mouthpiece of God. Uh, the reason why biblical prophets were effective was because the people believed that God was speaking to them. Uh, one of the things that Muhammad did was by joining himself with the Sebians, he declared himself a prophet of Allah. Now, I personally find this interesting. I personally find this interesting that in every uh, culture, the moon deity was always the female deity. Allah would have been a female. Deity, again, the moon, female deity. Uh, again, I find this interesting, and I don't, I've never heard an explanation as to why uh, this is, is really the moon god anyway. Uh, but uh, I find it interesting because if you notice in Islam, every rise to another, it is miracle that he did perform was that he split the moon in half, which was probably an illusion of clouds, you know. Uh, but it, there's always something dealing with the moon. Well, why is the moon so prevalent in Islam? It's because it goes back to the Allah deity. Even now they refer to God as Allah. Allah is a moon deity of the Sebian tribe. But there are other is, uh, uh, definitions as well. Uh, let me read here. Some scholars, and again, this is from my study guide. This is from uh, the Encyclopedia of Religion, uh, the Corpus Publisher. And you have several authors here, Meager, Paul, Thomas O'Brien, et al. Uh, this is what they say. Some scholars have made a comparison between Islam and the ancient worship of Baal. Baal was worshipped in Babylon, which is located in modern-day Iraq. According to the Encyclopedia of Religion, Allah compares with Babylonian Baal, B-E-L, or another spelling, Baal, which is what you read the Bible, you're familiar with. This was the main god of uh, the uh, uh, Philistines. It involves the worship of the sun, moon, and stars. 
The Sebians who joined to Muhammad in the quest back to Mecca worshipped the sun and the moon. And remember, the moon was Allah. So when you're talking about uh, who Allah was, the origin of it, it's a moon deity. Allah and God are not the same. But now here's something further that I think we should understand about Allah. Again, this comes from uh, the encyclopedia of religion. One of the translations of Allah in Arabic means the God, not God, but the God, signifying a God or chief of many gods. Uh, well, somebody said, well, Reverend, they, they're, they're monotheistic. They're not monotheistic. They're not polytheistic. Well, here's the interesting thing. Uh, and there's a shrine called the Kiba in Mecca. Every Muslim once, uh, at least once in their lifetime recognizes that they should make the Hajj. It contains 360 different gods. 360 different gods in the Kiba, this sh shrine. Uh, so the concept of of God, of the Bible, and God of Islam being the same is false. The God of Islam and the God of the Bible is not the same. It's not the same. Uh, you know, that being said, when you look at even the quest of Muhammad, and, and you know, let me say this to you. I, I, I'm friends with Muslims. I, they're friends, but Muslims I have been friends. All Muslims are not violent. Most of the Muslims you see carrying out these radical missions like ISIS and others are, are radical. Uh, they're radical because of the writings of the Quran and the uh, Hadith. Uh, some of the Muslims take the writings literally. Others take them uh, uh, figuratively. And so those that take it literally act out upon it. Uh, Jihad. Many uh, uh, Muslims will tell you that the jihad is a struggle within. But then, of course, you have others that take it a struggle for the world. Uh, and so the purpose is to convert the world to Islam, to cause people to come under the banner of Islam, uh, which goes back to the history of Islam. Uh, people historically were never converted to Islam. They were conquered into Islam. Uh, when you look at the Arab conquest of the 7th century, after the death of Muhammad, the uh, move of Islam spread basically into two different factions, the aggressive Muslims, uh, as well as those that were non-aggressive. The aggressive Muslims began to uh, take out what is now referred to history as the Arab conquest of the 7th century. Uh, you look it up. Uh, they began to aggressively, through bloodshed and warfare, spread the message of Islam. As I said before, people were not converted to Islam. They were conquered into Islam. But here's an interesting note. Here's an interesting note to you, my brothers, who are in the nation of Islam and say that this is the religion of the black man. You will note that in the 7th century, the 7th century conquest, that the Arab Muslim went into North Africa. And they began to conquer and slaughter many of those Africans, uh, trying to get them to convert. Christianity had already been in Africa. Christianity was in Africa. Mohammed was even born. Again, remember, Mohammed was not born until almost 600 years after Christianity. By this time, Christianity had already gone into Africa. It had already spread through North Africa predominantly. In fact, here's an interesting note. The gospel actually went down to Africa before it went up to Europe. Uh, it spread to India. Uh, most scholars tell you that, 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 that the, the apostle Thomas who we refer to as Doubting Thomas, actually had a tremendous ministry in India. Uh, scholars that have uh, the, the accounts of the apostles, uh, where they went, what, what, what legends and history has told us, that they went all over the world carrying this gospel. And as a result of that, uh, many people were turned to Christ long before Muhammad was born. Uh, when you look at uh, uh, the Bible, the, the gospel in Africa, uh, going back to what I was saying, the, the gospel was already in Africa before the Arab conquest. Uh, one of the things that Muhammad did, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Muslims did when they went in there, were they were the first ones to actually come to, to preach this uh, curse of Ham theory. That was not started by the white man. Now, the white man did pick it up. The white man did use it. The white man used it as a tool to enslave Africans and black folks in America. And there's still people that believe it today. But it was not started by the white man. It was started by the Arab Muslims during this conquest of the seventh century. Many Africans were enslaved and slaughtered. Many young boys were castrated because on the slave market, 
Unix were a high commodity. And so many of those young black boys, some of them bled to death because they were just castrated to make eunuchs out of them so that they could be sold as high-priced slaves. Mohammed himself committed a number of terrorist acts. Uh, the idea that this was a peaceful prophet, a peaceful man, you obviously don't know the history. Uh, one of the things that they did was rob the uh, caravans along the trade routes there. Uh, they robbed the caravans. They, they pillaged and slaughtered the caravan route and, and, and the traders that were along that route there uh, through uh, Arabia, uh, the, the, the Arabian Peninsula, if, I, if I've got that right. Uh, they also conquered. They did a number of conquering on the way back to Mecca from Medina. Mohammed from the sea bids raised an army. And the army went back toward Mecca conquering and eventually went into Mecca and conquered Mecca through bloodshed, and warfare. So the idea that Islam is a religion of peace is just not true. Now, let me say this to you. And I know there's some of you that say, well, Reverend, what about the Crusades? What about those in the name of Christianity that fought, that slaughtered, that, that killed Muslims? What about those in the name of Christianity? And I understand full well what you're saying, but I think there's an interesting thing that you should note. Jesus never advocated violence. This was not the teaching of Jesus. Most of the people that did that did that out of their own zeal. However, Mohammed was active in violence. Mohammed was active in terrorism. Now, I know that there are those, as I said before, that are peaceful Muslims. I've had neighbors that were Muslim. We got along fine. Uh, I've, I've talked to, I've got friends, some of you that I hope that you're viewing this. I still want to keep your friendship. But I must tell you that Jesus is the only way. I must point you to the cross. So when we're dealing with the origin of Islam, and we're dealing with the origin of the Muslim religion, these facts should be borne in mind. Let me read a quote here, uh, because again, we're dealing with the concept of Allah, the difference between Allah uh, and Christianity. First of all, Muslims can never get to know Allah like we know God the Father. In fact, the idea of uh, Father is, is uh, foreign to them. You know, they, they, they don't use that. They don't have that personal touch. They don't have that personal relationship. They don't have that personal testimony. Allah is distant. Allah is, 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 uh, 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 well, well, how can I put it? He's a militant leader. Uh, see, there's a quote that I'm trying to find here from a Muslim scholar who made the statement, praise the Lord. Y'all you know, give me time here. Ah, uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. I may have to take this into next week. I see my time is running out. It goes back over by so fast. Uh, but there was a Muslim scholar who quoted uh, that, that Muslims can never get to know. Uh, let's see. Thank the Lord. Muslims can never get to know uh, uh, Allah uh, like the Christian would know. And, and, uh, and this is what he was saying. Uh, because uh, he's he's a, he's a, he's forever master and we're forever servant. Well, now here's the thing that we as Christians do: we get to know God as Father, and this is why even Apostle Paul said we cry, "Abba, Father." Abba is Greek for Daddy. So there's a personal relationship uh, that we have. There's a personal relationship uh, that we have with Jesus. Uh, let's see. This is what I thought I had there here. I'm going to have to pick that up next week. Y'all yo, yo, forgive me for my unpreparedness on that. I should have that, but I don't. I, I apologize for that. But we're going to have to pick this up next week. We're going to have to go part two with Islam. Uh, but again, one of the problems that even the uh, religious leaders had with Jesus was that he referred to God as his father. The idea that God is distant is common among all religions, that God is way out there, and you must come to him humbly, as a servant. Well, of course, we want to come to him humbly as a servant anyway, but there's a relationship that we have with him, uh, those of us that have been born again. There's a relationship that we have, those of us that are followers of Christ. He is not distant. He is with us. He is a father, uh, and we can go up to us before him humbly as children of God uh, and, and, and submit to him as father. Even the, the prayer that the Lord prayed, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, we worship you. Uh, we, we give you glory. We give you praise because you are Father, and we worship you as Father. Now, our time is up. 
uh, unfortunately, we, we, we I got through this best I could, but I'm going to have to pick this up next week. I, I wanted to get it all in today. There's so much more that I want to deal with dealing with Islam. But I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you, those of you that are viewing us right now, uh, let us know where you're uh, listening from, even if you're not listening to the live broadcast. Let us know where you're viewing from. I want to know. Last week, we got somebody from Tokyo, Japan. I was so great, blessed by that. Uh, let us know where you, 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 you're viewing us from. Uh, just Just simply chiming in there, and uh, it will greatly bless us. Uh, now, next week, we're going to pick this on you today that will bless you, that will encourage you, that will inspire you, uh, and that will give you information. Uh, pick it up next week. We have no choice. we got to pick it up next week. Uh, like I said, I've got other things I want to deal with, but I want to finish this so that we will know that Jesus Christ is the only way, that Jesus Christ is the only hope, and all our faith, all our trust, all my love, is in Jesus Christ. Until next week, this is Scott Bradley saying, God bless you. We love you. We thank God for you. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you.